Keith Simonton of IMDb, you are the reigning champ among experts at Gold Derby, the defending champ who had the best predictions last year. Are you going to do it again? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, just people watching, Keith got 84% last year, which was great. The only couple of categories he missed were the ones we all missed, like um, Big Short, um, and I'm, what am I saying? Um, yeah. Big Hero Six winning animated feature, Big that Hero kind Six. of thing. That's still, I, I'm still, I that's that that didn't movie did not win best animated. How to Train <laughs> Dragon Two won. Best <laughs> In my mind, it did too, Keith. You'll be happy. With that. <laughs> still befuddled by that. Uh, I love your predictions this year, and I'm agreeing with you on the uh, the long shot. If you can call it a long shot for best picture, uh, for, we're both going for Spotlight. Uh, we are in the the vast minority at Gold Derby. We have eight or seventeen or eighteen of the twenty seven experts saying it's going to be Revenant. Yep. Uh, I'll give you my explanation in a minute. What's your reasoning for picking Spotlight? Well, I had Spotlight from the time that it debuted at Toronto. I had it. Uh, well, I had Inside Out, and then and then when I saw Spotlight, I I put uh, Spotlight up there. And I held it for the longest time. I think it was Scott Mance and myself and a few other people that, you know, were even after the DGAs and everything else or the PGAs were still holding on to it. And um, I switched the Revenant just in right before the close, the voting closed. Just uh, it, it just seemed like cinematographer, which you're going to get actor and director. That, that seemed very compelling. And I just switched it back to Spotlight. Uh, and I do think it, I, I've heard a lot of people who really don't like The Revenant and find it to be you know, extremely overblown. Uh, it, it was my number one film of the year, by the way, um, in my top 20 at IMDb. But I, I can understand the, the animus towards it. And there's a lot of it. And so when you have that, I, I think, and, you know, we've talked a lot about the preferential system. When you have that, and it's a kind of a big undercurrent, I think it's not the number two spot on a lot of, uh, on a lot of other people's uh, ballots. That's exactly what my thinking is. And uh, how this year differs from last year is that while Spotlight is the movie that people love the most when you ask the voters, Last year, the movie they loved the most was Boyhood. That there wasn't this kind of emotional swooning over uh, Birdman. Birdman, but Birdman had the most number two votes. I, I still believe that Boyhood had the most number ones, but it's those number twos, as you're saying, is how you win or die here. This year, it's different, Keith. This year, there are yeah. different movies: the love movie and the divisive movie. And uh, because a lot of Boyhood was very divisive last year, a lot of people said, "Oh, it's just so thin, and it's not much of a film." All oh, this is getting way too much hype. And so it was that one number one vote or that number five, six, seven vote. And I think this year, yeah, uh, Revenant is the divisive movie. Spotlight is the love movie. And all of a sudden now you have to think, all right, this preferential ballot was created to reward the consensus film. You know what? I, I think th this consensus film is Spotlight. I think it is too. Uh, it also reminds me, although it's it's got a diff different, different competitors, it also reminds me of Argo in that. Argo, you know, showed up at Toronto and everyone, we were all going, you know, that's a really good movie. I really like Argo, um, but it's not best picture. It's, you know, it's not best picture. Yeah, yeah, it is best picture. <laughs> and I, it, I certainly, Spotlight is so, you know, it, it just did so well at the Independent Spirit Awards. Um, and I think that's indicative, uh, particular. I think, in many ways, the Independent Spirit Awards is a tougher crowd for them, a tougher win for them than the Oscars, um, because you know it's it's still the larger movie. You know, out of all of these, you know, Tangerine is is there. You know, with a, a great film with, shot on an iPhone uh, 5S. It, there are all these kind of like independent movies that feel a little more independent than Spotlight, a little scrappier. You know, and Spotlight still wins. I think that's I think that's a uh, that's a signal. I, I agree, but we have to admit, of course, uh, Spotlight was not competing against The Revenant or The Big Short at the uh, Indie Spirits. But sure. there, but what it does show is that there is this awards love for it. 
and it did win the Writers Guild, did win the Screen Actors Guild, did yeah. win uh, the Critics' Choice Awards. Those things are often yeah. all very telling for Best Picture. The problem is it didn't win any other Crafts Awards, and you know, it's just not a Crafts movie. And in terms of acting, it, they just didn't write it in such a way that there's one showcase role that just no. glows. So you know what? Okay. And I think that's the, that's the, the even-handedness of that film, you know, is just kind of this through line, I think. You know, I, there's only really the one actorly, you know, point in that movie, which we all know, which is Ruffalo. Um, you know, you know, they knew and they, you know, they, they, they did what's doing it to kids. And that's the only point where they kind of let it let it out. Yeah. Uh, everything else is very contained. Now, on the flip side of Spotlight, it's also been compared to All the President's Men. You know, I think the, the other, an, another great uh, journalism uh, uh, movie. And All the President's Men didn't win that year either. Um, no, it lost so to Rocky, of course, know, after winning a lot of producers. I know, I know. And no movie about journalism has ever won Best Picture. And But look, the tea leaves are all over the place this year, Keith, and that's the problem is last year, even though a lot of people were still saying Boyhood could win, and I, I believed it could, I was among those who thought it was really in the race, you couldn't bet against it because you still had all the guilds, PGA, DGA, SAG, all said Birdman, but that's not going – that that way this year this year they're all over the place to different movies so you and i as pundits have permission to jump off a few clips here uh and when it comes to best picture and i had revving it all the way up till yesterday morning and finally i said you know what i'm just hearing more spotlight and big short votes out there and uh, and so i i'm uh i don't hang out with the the steak eaters you know the below the line tech guys that's about half the academy. You and I, when we yeah. do our journalism, you know, travel in our journalism circles throughout uh, Hollywood, we 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 travel with the other crowd, you know, the producers, writers, directors, and and yeah. publicists, and all of that. And they're like half the academy. So I would say that, and Pete Hammond loves to call those the blue states and the steak eaters the red states. <laughs> and so the red states have Revenant and Mad Max, and the blue states have spotlight and big short and <laughs> and it's like half and half among the academy and this is what you have to predict and that's kind of fun but this year it's a three three way race instead of a two way race you need fewer votes to win so i think there's more of a chance for the the, the movie with the most consensus and the most heart to do it i think there's also a sense of of spreading the love um that you know what it, 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 where i think in the past you know, particularly the long past, where something would sweep everything. Yeah, I think that was largely because a lot of the Academy members w only went to that film. You know, and that was the one that they actually happened to see, and so they just marked that ballot because that's what they'd seen and they didn't know about the other ones. Um, I think now that the prolifer proliferation of screeners and you know um, links, that everyone kind of is, is is much better at this. So they've all seen Mad Max and they've seen The Revenant and. I think Mad Max does extremely well in the technical awards. Um, I, I think I think they go. You know what? We're not. We love it. Here's where we're going to reward it. We're going to give you Revenant's going to be obviously it's an incredible achievement. In a read two, you're in. You know, cinematography obviously that's historic. You know, there's never been a combo I don't believe of actor and cinematographer winning um, back to back. Oh, so that okay. would be. That would be, you know, historic, obviously, for the Oscar. And then uh, Lebeski winning for, you know, uh, three times. No cinematographer's ever done that in a row. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mean director and cinematographer back to back. Correct. So um, that said, however, we have to acknowledge you and I recently had Revenant for a good, for many good reasons. It just won BAFTA, which has correctly predicted best picture six out of the last seven years. Yep. Preferential ballot at the Oscars has been six years now. So that's that, that's best to just kind of measure these stats in just that period of time because everything before that was different. Revenant just won yeah. DGA, it has the most noms, it's going to have the most wins up there with Mad Max. In a way we're stupid not to, to bet on it, but yet it's, um, uh, there is a trend, I agree with you, that about spreading the love in recent years, 12 Years a Slave, Argo just won three. I don't think it's a, too much of a stretch to think, well, you know what, uh, Spotlight could win with just two. You have to go all the way back to the greatest show on earth in 1950 to 
uh, to find that press that last time a movie won Best Picture with just two. But the rules are all different now. It's a the rules are all different. The way that people consume them are is is extremely different, and I, I think that's really. I, I honestly think that the, the, the way the proliferation of screeners and links has changed the way that this you know uh, that the makeup of the ballot happens. You know that people's uh, how people end up actually voting. Yeah, and the. Uh, uh, the ballot now, as it stands to people watching this video, uh, best picture is first on the ballot. Now you can go back and change it if you want, but um, there are two setups. There's the desktop version of the voting where the home, the, the main screen pops up after you click start voting and you have three categories across the top, starting from the left, it's best picture. If you do it on a mobile device, on a tablet or a phone, what happens is the very you get a choice, random access or linear, and the default is linear, and no, it just automatically, quite frankly, goes to linear, and best picture is first. Now, you again, you can go back and change it. I think if best picture was last, it would have a better chance to win because you're already checking off all these revenant votes, and so all of a sudden you've got it at top of mind. But being first, I think, helps uh, spotlight. Hmm. That's a... That's a that's fascinating. I would actually, I would actually disagree with that a little bit, which is, I think when you're hit with that right off, you think about the movie. What was the movie movie this year? And that's the Revenant. You know, that's the big, burly, you know, ex wide expanses, huge horizons, incredible, you know, backstory behind it. Uh, that's interesting. I, 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 I like your theory. Uh, and you know what else is interesting, uh, Keith, is there are no instructions on that uh, category. So I'm hearing from actual voters going, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Drag these to the left, to the right? And, and and so they just kind of, a lot of people just put one. They don't realize they're supposed to put all eight of them there. And then others uh, are frustrated by the, the mobile experience because it, it, it's very hard to do drag and drop in mobile. You can do it on a desktop. It's very hard yeah. in mobile. And so um, one person who did realize she was supposed to drag it over said, said, it took me three and a half minutes to drag over my movie and for the first position. I wasn't going to waste time on the others. So I think if there is a big uh, forfeit of the ranking, and which I believe is, is really true, think of what happens. Throw out all those ballots for Room and Brooklyn. <laughs> if they're just going to put those at top, there will be no second vote. That, that would change the... the the dynamic as well. I know. Very much so. So anyway, we have a lot to think about. Uh, but yeah. I agree with you that, look, if there's any year to go for the consensus movie, I think it's this year, and, and um, we'll see what we do. I'm, I've got your your whole predictions up here. You and I agree on most of these things, and, and we're in step with the pundits, including Inaritu winning, and Leo, and Brie Larson, and Sly Stallone, and what about Alicia that song? Well, this is, let's, get, let's get down to there. I... <laughs> I um, I think you may be onto something. You've got writings on the wall there instead of the uh, Dine Warren Lady Gaga song. Explain. Yeah. Well, I think this gets into the did you actually hear it um, versus I, I would say uh, you, you you definitely have the sympathies uh, and the not the Lifetime Achievement Award because it's obviously a good song on its own, but the Diane Warren, you know, eight noms, never won, you know, let's let's make sure we get this done. I'm not sure that is of the same level of, you know, Ennio Marcon. You know, we've never given him a competitive Oscar. We're going to give him a competitive Oscar this year, even though it's uh, probably, you know, one of the least successful scores of his because he's, you know, just had so many masterful scores. Uh, but he wins, you know, it's the classic uh, Oscar imperative. You don't win for the you don't win for your best work. You win for the one that they need to give you because, by God, we're going to give you an Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the Diane Warren thing's uh, of the same uh, level of awareness or um, in particularly, I, I don't feel like they feel like they owe it to her. Um, and Lady Gaga, I um, you know, I, I don't know that that is uh, the compelling sell. I think most people like to reward James Bond themes. They certainly have before, and I think- No, but they haven't before. Up until a couple of years ago, no Bond song had ever won. Well, but Adele, I mean, um, yeah. obviously Skyfall and- Yeah. 
So, uh, but no, I think you're onto something there. I'm going to, I'm a coward. I'm going to stick to the hunting ground, but you're right. It's that uh, they haven't seen the hunting ground. They don't know what that is. Yeah. They haven't seen Kirby Dick's The Hunting Ground documentary. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. However, no. Harvey has done a, a really aggressive campaign with the voters about this song. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, that didn't help him on Carol either. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so, yeah, it's my one. You know, I'll, I'm probably going to live on die in a couple, and that and Best Picture probably going to be it. Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about sound editing because. Um, you may be onto something here too, and that is that you've got Mad Max. It's the loudest movie. The loudest movie usually wins, and it's you know like they always vote for the most of something than the best of anything. And the sound may be very good in that, but uh, over at BAFTA uh, last week, Revenant actually won the sound awards. And last night at the Motion Picture Sound Editors Guild, these two movies tied. So all of a sudden we're we're really in a uh, quandary here. I was pundits saying, all right, do we go with the guilds? Well, the guilds can't make up their mind. Do we go with BAFTA? Well, what the hell do they know? You know, it does, it's not always predictive. And The Revenant is, is, is very much like gravity. It's about the lack of sound. Mm -hmm. um, and gravity won, but you, the sound award. But you might say, well, gravity won because it had such a sweep going that year. It just got carried away with that uh, sweep. So are you nervous about The Revenant winning here? I, I switched over to The Revenant for the Sound Awards, but I look at your predictions for Mad Max and I go, God, Keith's probably right about this too. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, so uh, how nervous are you about The Revenant in these sound categories? Or are you really pretty confident about Mad Max? I'm pretty confident about Mad Max and I'm pretty confident for two reasons. I think A, they did a very, very good job um, through the fall of talking about the special effects of Mad Max. There were clips after clip after clip that was released. I think they did a very, Warner did a very good job of getting that word out there. Um, and again, I think the other aspect is, is that they want to reward Mad Max because of the incredible groundswell of absolute adoration for that movie. Um, and, you know, that I, I think they feel like when they're doing the ballots, like, I know we're going to give some big awards. I mean, we're, we're going to give cinematography to The Revenant, and Roger Deakins goes home yet again without an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. um, so let's, let's reward this other thing that we love down here, and I think they just, I think they just tick boxes. Um, you may be right there, but where I think you're wrong in the tech categories is on visual effects. I think... You look at this uh, lineup, you've got Mad Max. I think they, the Oscar voters, just see Star Wars and, and think that's the uh, that the, that's special effects in my mind. It did win the most Guild Awards, Star Wars did. And then there's the counter argument of The Revenant. If that movie's really going to sweep like many people think it's going to in the overall, then there's the bear scene. And that, that really was the uh, the digital visual effect achievement of the year. What do you think? I, that's and arguably true, and and they did a very good job. Fox did an excellent job of, you know, talking about that bear and you know showing what a you know. First, they were very quiet about it, and then you know out came this you know this thing was a created uh, whole cloth. So that is, and as you said, it's an incredible achievement. Star Wars, um, I I think that they feel like it's already been rewarded by being a massive <laughs> right, 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 right. and they don't need to give it anything. You're wrong. This, that, this is where you're going down, kiddo. I, I feel strongly about that. Um, <laughs> oh, at the Oscars, anything is possible. You know what, Keith, we've had tens of thousands of per people predict the Oscars at Gold Derby. Nobody has ever had a hundred percent ever. Isn't that amazing? No amazing. And so when, when, when it happens for me, I'm going to be very, very, very. <laughs> you know what? Uh, what? What? Are you going to commit suicide if you get them all right except visual effects? And you're going to say, like, a little voice in here is going to say, well, Tom told me, you know? Hardly. I'll be dancing. If I get 90, what? I'm going to be dancing in the street. Um, I, Tom, I noticed you didn't bring up that I was 100% for the Independent Spirit Award. That's right. You, uh, again, on this uncanny kudos profit here. Congratulations. Thank you very much. As I like to, I like to quote the 4th um, century philosopher Conan when he said, 
crush your enemies, see them driven before you, they have a lamentation of the women. <laughs> <laughs> that is what is best in life. You carry a little recording of that around. You sicko. You <laughs> Hey, let's talk about the really tricky ones. These goddamn animated, animated short, documentary short, live action short. Uh, let's start with animated short. I agree with you that it's Sanjay's super team. Uh, yeah. What's your thought there? My thought is is that they've seen it um, because it's in front of Inside Out. Uh, you know, when we did uh, animated uh, and animated uh, awards during the summer for the wrap. I saw a number of these, saw The Bear Story, which is an incredibly uh, beautiful film. Uh, and if it wasn't for the fact, if, if it was animators voting for it, Bear Story uh, would win. But it's not. It's everybody. And so they've all seen it. The one that they've all seen is Sanjay. And I think it's the one that has the most heart. Remember last year, Disney won with Feast because it was about the dog and the yeah. little boy. And, and, it's, and it made you just go, ah, ah. And I think uh, that's what Sanjay does here. Of course, and, and it also, also speaks well for diversity, too, being the whole Indian thing. Uh, very true. But it also, um, I, although they didn't play this up too much, you know, Pixar hasn't won in this category in years. I think it's 16. Yeah, but Disney uh, did yeah, win Disney last year. Has, but I mean, I think Pixar yeah. itself. Um, and so, yeah, I think it wins. Now, over in documentary short, I am so tormented by this because you've got Claude, Claude Landsman, and um, I agree, and that's the one I'm tempted to switch to at the last minute because, yeah. yes, it's, it's got the Holocaust, um, the, the Showa thing in the title, but it is the most boring. Awful doc. If they actually watch these, there's no way anyone's going to vote for that. I, if they actually watch it, I think they vote for Girl in the River. But right. you disagree, so size up this race for us. Well, I think again, this is the um, this is the Argo thing. Oddly enough, even even working in the shorts category, which is um, they love movies about movies, and this is a movie about a movie that they know they're supposed to have watched, <laughs> okay. so, and they haven't. So, you know, let's, and, you know, it's about the Holocaust. That's, that's important, right? Check. It's more about, I, I, it's not about the, I, a few years ago, gave up on um, trying to champion things to the very last. I, I've gone with what I think, how, the, how I think they're going to vote. And I think they vote for the one that's about the movie that they didn't see. Maybe so, but I think if they do watch these, and I think what we are seeing is evidence that they actually are watching these in recent years, which is a more shock. More. Um, because the, they don't have to anymore, remember. It used to be right. that you had to go to these panels, see them, and then vote, and now the whole Academy can vote. And I think uh, those that, that do vote here actually do watch them, and if they did watch them, uh, there's no way Landsman gets a single vote, quite frankly. Pretty and probably. Girl in the River is... is uh, I think wins the award for most like making of a murderer, the kind of uh, mm -hmm. dramatic experience the viewer has where it, it just keeps getting more and more shocking and more and more outrageous as the uh, as the uh, video progresses and to the point where you're just gasping and screaming, you can't believe this is happening. And uh, it certainly had a deep impact on me watching it. But on the other hand, female point of view, things don't tend to do well at the Oscars in general. Um, I'm not sure how sympathetic they are. I'm not sure that they even watch them and the Holocaust thing may trump it. All those things, you may be right, but I talked myself into sticking with Girl in the River in Good the, for you, the naive hope that they actually watch these. You, you, can fe you can feel good about your you know, commitment to the actual film. <laughs> and that's why you're going to kick my ass again this year. <laughs> right, here's where I think you're wrong. Most oh. of the experts have uh, Ave Maria up for best live action short. And I'm sorry, that thing is offensive, stupid. Everybody looks terrible in there. The Jews look terrible uh, as just obnoxious, you know, uh, convent crashers. And I um, and it doesn't have a, a very good ending. It is silly and cute and funny and all those little things. And I think it, it just kind of tug at the heartstrings that way, but I'm I'm all for Stutterer, which you've got down in third place, so explain your picks here. Silly, cute, funny, and tugs at the heartstrings. Okay, okay. I, I don't I, I don't pick them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, you know, I just gotta go with what I think they're gonna do, and I think they're gonna go with Ave Maria. 
Even here's why I, here's why I think they're going to go stutterer. First of all, it's in English. Second of all, it's um, it's the one that when you finish watching it, you go, oh, I mean, it's got the Sanjay thing. It's just it it really just uh, elicits the most the strongest emotional hug reaction of them all, and um, I think people identify with that, and I think it's um, it's very well done. The whole thing I'll be is honest, that was. Uh, that was the other one. I, even though I'm surprised, I, I, I guess I just didn't move it. I, I should have had it in second. Because well, that was got, the other one. Um, shock in second, and a lot of people have it. A lot of wise Oscar minds have that in first, actually. And I understand why. It really is the best of these. It's the best one. But this has happened so many years in a row, which is that the best um, short is it's typically depressing and doesn't win. Yeah, yeah, and I would absolutely give it to Shock. And it's a extremely good, heartrending, well put together, um, you know, tragic coming of age in 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 Serbia and in, in the recollections. It's and it's and it's unexpected. It's the best one. Yeah, the best one doesn't typically win. No, I realize that, and that's why I don't have it at first. And uh, it takes all the way to the end for you to realize its greatness. It has a wonderful finale. Uh, otherwise, it's just two Albanian boys and a bicycle and nasty Serbian, uh, and it's all subtitles. And well, come on, that, I mean that's the bicycle thing. It's like a father and a son, and you know. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I watched it. It's it's what, what that crappy movie? <laughs> yeah, it's still very powerful, very good. But um, the only one I feel certain about is Sanjay. I feel I'm, I'm, I feel okay with Stutterer, and I don't know what the f to do with documentary short. You may be onto something with uh, Landsman. That's that's the way I see him. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any wise advice in general for people um, making their predictions? Do you have a philosophy in general that you go well, with? I think, I think we kind of talked about it. I think that um, that when I have been back in the press room at the Oscars, it's it's not the same people coming through. It's not these sweeps anymore. Um, I it's because they're seen more and i think the academy is it, it, the the older members are feeling more compelled to see more that and and have an easier time of seeing them because of the screeners and the links um that you're seeing a broader diversity of who wins um it's not singularly title based now i mean this could be the year that that's all proved wrong and the revenant sweeps um, but I think that's I think that's what's going on. Certainly, I mean, you look at the acting categories; that's certainly the case. Oh, it's been the case for a little while, but um, I think it's uh, a broader swath, except for in the technical awards where I think Mad Max sweeps it. Yeah, like Gravity swept. It doesn't necessarily carry to best picture as Gravity proved. But the old days of Lord of the Rings: Return of the King winning everything, everything. going eleven for eleven, I think are over. I do too. So that's my. That's how I look at it. Okay, well, you've got me all worried now, Keith. I was, as if I wasn't jittery enough on Oscar Day. Now I'm looking at my picks going, oh, God, he's yeah, right you about me worried about Stutter, too, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you're wrong on Ave Maria. You have my permission to steal Stutter. But, uh, uh, no, I mean, it was, you know, again, with that category, they seem to go for the one that is the most heartwarming. Yeah, and it's in English, and the guy's cute and adorable, and it kind of looks like a young James Blunt. And uh, James Blunt, <laughs> which was half of the half of the allure of that video that was became such this big sensation. Anyway, that's just my kooky theories. Well, we shall see. And uh, I, we've never bet before. Maybe we should bet. Or can no, we I'm not. I'm not taking you on. Uh, <laughs> let, let me let me put a little more Penske money in the bank and build that up, and then uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take you on. You scare me now, Keith. Well, uh, well. We'll uh, agree to uh, somebody has to buy the winner has to buy uh, the other one a drink in on the tower at the tower club on sunset. Perfect. I'm on for that. Sounds great. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Keith. Good luck. See you, Tom. You too. Happy Oscars.